Hello friends and thank you for joining me today. If this is your first time visiting, I certainly appreciate you giving me this opportunity. I hope that you will go and check out some of the other videos on my channel and maybe consider a subscription if you think any of those might be able to help you out. Now for those that are returning, as always, thank you for your continued support. I can't tell you how much that means to me. It is very important. Now, I know it's been a while since I posted, about a month now, and in my defense, the problem was is that I was moving from where I was at to where I'm at now. That entailed me having to pack up all of my tools, get them on a U-Haul, and get them moved to a storage location, because where I'm at now, I don't have a garage. Uh, hopefully, in the next six months to a year, I'm going to be able to, to find a place that's a, a permanent place. I'm going to have my own garage and be able to bring you some more content and make this a little bit more interesting. Now for today's video, I'm going to be working with my friend's 2000 Honda Civic Si. This has the V16A JDM version of that engine and of course a 5-speed manual transmission. I uh, featured on the channel before, there was a water pump that I replaced for him, there was a TPS sensor as well. Well last summer he called me, he was on his way home from church and he was a little upset with the uh, transmission been making a funny noise and then finally it locked up on him. He said he just, just screeched to a halt. So I went out to help him out and I was able to get the car in first gear and get it off the road, but was able, but determined it was not gonna make it home. So we had to get it towed back to his garage. And uh, once we got there, I pulled the uh, drain plug for the transmission, let the fluid out and it's magnetic on the back of that drain plug and it had chunks of gear teeth inside of it. So I told him at that point, you know, we're gonna have to get this thing sit somewhere. Somebody's gonna have to rebuild this for you. And he already had a guy. So I pulled the transmission off. Uh, I did not film any of that. I'm in his garage, the lighting's different and all. And I don't have all my tools right there. So I just, it, it was kind of an emergency. Let's get this thing out. He got it sent over to his friend. And uh, I don't know, about two weeks later, he gets it back. and. Um, went to go put the transmission back in. So the transmission went back in, got the car cranked up, everything worked great, except for his leaking transmission fluid around the differential. Uh, on the bottom of these uh, front wheel drive transmissions, uh, you can see the differential is kind of like a little half circle at the bottom, and the axle goes in for the you know the driver's side, the passenger side on either side of it. And there are axle seals that go around uh, where the axles fit into the transmission. Well, we had a pretty good leak on one of them, uh, he brought it over and I started looking at it and I realized that I made a mistake. And the mistake was, is that the, when I put the seal in, I had pushed it in too far. Now I'm gonna come off of the stand here in a second. I'm gonna show you the axle seal I have here and uh, show you exactly what I'm talking about. Now, what I have here is an axle seal for a Honda. This one is for my F23, but they're all basically the same. They're just different sizes. So the one on the Civic that we're working on is generally the same setup. You can see here it has like two parts on the outside. This, this is the part that goes inside of the transmission, and this is the part that sits against the axle. Now, this spongy part is designed to push against the axle and, and to create the seal where you don't leak any of the uh, fluid out. The inner part needs to be flush with your transmission case. And that was the mistake that I made. I pushed this in too far. And when I did that, it would allow, it did not butt up against the axle like it was supposed to. And it actually chewed up a little bit inside here. So we had to pull that back out and, uh, and correct that and put a whole new one in. So that wouldn't be a problem in the future. So I'm gonna address this later in the video. But the main thing to keep in mind is that the, the inner part here has to be flush with the transmission case. Now, with all that being said, let's go ahead and go to the live action that the video recorded a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but first, I'd like to give a shout out to my friend Alexander, who has a, a TikTok page. If uh, you're a fan of uh, Pitbulls or the Pocket Bully, he has a ton of really cute videos on there that is really well done. I'm going to put his, uh, his link to his TikTok here. Be sure to check him out and give him a little bit of love for me. That would be appreciated. Here we go. Okay, here we have the car up, supported on jack stands, of course, and uh, the first step is going to take the axle nut off. Uh, this is a 32 millimeter on this particular setup, which I have on my impact wrench. I'll tell you this, the uh, first time I took this off, it, it, I had uh, a heck of a time getting it off. It was way over tight. I tried everything. I'd used a, a pneumatic uh, impact wrench with the pressure up around 120, 130 in it. I used a... Uh, a pry bar with a uh, jack handle over the side of it standing on it couldn't get it off what finally got it was i heated this thing up about as hot as i could get it with map gas and then i used a candle and put it over the top of it and it, it supposedly it melts into the threads and it actually came off that's twice now i've had one that was stuck and then i've got it off with a candle i'm not guaranteeing that works but it worked for me so this should come right off let's go ahead and bump it off watch your ears 
Okay, the next step is going to be to uh, loosen or take the nut off of the lower ball joint. Uh, this is called a castle nut. There is supposed to be a cotter pin through this. Uh, we did not have any when we put this back on. I have one now, so we're going to take care of that when it comes back off. Okay, and this is a 17 millimeter. Let's go ahead and get that off. There we go. I would use my impact wrench, but I can't fit it up under there. Okay, now we'll go ahead and switch to this and finish zipping that off. And you can see the holes there where the cotter pin is supposed to go through that we don't currently have right now. Okay, so uh, the next step is to get the ball joint, the lower ball joint here, out of the lower uh, control arm here. And uh, do not hit this with a hammer to knock it out. You will mushroom the end of this and you won't be able to get your bolt back over it. What you do is you use a uh, sledge. You hit against the side. You can see where this has already been beat the heck over its 20-year uh, life. This is the easiest way to get it off. We would hit this with a hammer until it pops loose, and then we'll be able to get it out. They do have the uh, pickle fork that you can put in there, but those are hard on the ball joints anyway. Uh, we've already had this one out. It's, it's pretty much done, but it still works, so we're going to uh, address that later. got it loose okay with that ball joint loose we can go ahead and pick the whole uh, knuckle assembly up out of the lower control arm like that and then we're going to back that axle out until it's free and you can move this as much as you want you're not going to hurt anything uh, you just don't want to put any stress on the cv boots if you can help it all right now we're looking underneath the car where the axle this is where it goes into the differential and i'm going to put a pry tool in between the uh transmission in this and i'm going to give it some bumps uh, i may have to take the camera out of the way because it, it might be in the way when i do this but just know that if i do that's what i'm after all right so i'm going to grab the axle kind of pick up on it here and i'm going to give it some bumps and here it comes we're just going to sit this out of the way i'm not going to bother taking it all out because we're just going after the seal and i don't need to all right, so I'm going to put the camera here where we can see that seal. Trying to get everything set up for you just right. Okay, it's this uh, black seal that goes around here. This one uh, works just like a rear main seal for your crankcase and all. It's just a circular um, rubber seal that's got a spring inside of it that, that holds it against the axle. Uh, so we already have a replacement. I'm not worried about saving that. So I'm just going to use... A pick like this and get behind it without scratching anything and I'm just gonna pull that out all right there's the uh, seal that did take a little doing and here's the spring that came out with it they're almost impossible to get them out and reuse them so don't even bother make sure that you have a replacement ready to go so let's uh, get the bag for the new seal we're gonna break uh, show you how to reinstall it all right what I have here I have the uh, Honda original replacement for this and if you're looking for it uh, there's your part number. This is for the passenger side. The one on the driver side is different. All right, so I've got the uh, seal ready to go now. Um, what I'm going to do before I install it is around the outside of this is I'm going to use this grease to grease that as up as much as I can. It's going to help with the uh, the install, make it a little bit easier, and it'll uh, help to seal this where it's supposed to be. All right, I'm ready to go ahead and get the seal back in, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean around this area really well uh, with just a, a old rag. And uh, you, you really should drain the transmission before you do this, but I've, I've gotten away several times without doing that first, so we're just going to top it off after we're done. So let me go ahead and dry this up, clean it up. All right, with that done, and we're just going to use our fingers to push the seal in now. Now the goal here is we don't want to push the seal in past where the outside of it is flush with the transmission case. If you go in too deep, it will not work correctly. We found that out the hard way, which is exactly why we're having to replace this seal right now. So you just use your thumb and you go around and you just feel and make sure that everything is even and flat and that you know that you're good to go and you're ready to put the, uh, the axle back in. Okay, I'll get you a little bit closer here and let you see what I was about. It's just, that, can I get the camera that close when I have my hands up there working? All right, we're gonna go ahead and uh, slam this axle back in and show you how to do that. Okay, with this ready to go now, um, I'm gonna just 
fit that back into the transmission. Be gentle, don't uh, break your seal you just did. And if it doesn't go right away, what you wanna do is back it out and give it like an eighth of an inch turn and then try again until it, until it seats itself. And that actually went in right there. So after that's in, we're gonna give it a couple of good slams from the other side to make sure it's fully seated in there because if you don't have it all the way in, this, this car is not gonna roll uh, when you go to put it in gear. All right, with the axle back in now, we're ready to go ahead and uh, feed it back through the, uh, the knuckle here and just pick that up. There it goes. So we got the axle axle now partially through the uh, wheel hub I'm just going to do some wiggling and at the same time I'm going to have to pick it up and get that um, lower ball joint back through the lower control arm so all I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick up on this and I'm going to move that ball joint with my thumb and get it back through the uh, hole it belongs in and at the same time I'm going to work and try to get the axle to finish coming through the top there it goes And we'll... There, got that back through. So now we're ready to go ahead and put our castle nut back on, run that all the way down. We're going to put a cotter pin in it. Give that a good crank. And uh, what we're going to look for is the hole. We want it to match up with one of these breaks in the uh, the castle nut. So I've gone a little bit too far. So I'm actually going to back that up half a hair. There we go. You can see that the hole is now lined up with that slot in the castle nut. Yeah, that might work. Now. There it goes. Nice. Okay, so now we're through. And then we're just going to... bend the arms of these out I know that's not pretty but that's how these things are designed to work okay we're ready to get the uh, the axle nut back in get the tire back on and with my torque wrench set to 134 foot-pounds there's your click guys Okay, and the uh, last step before we put the tire back on is we need to dent this axle nut down into this little divot that's on the end of the axle. You can see where this thing has been used before, but if, as long as you have a clean uh, area that you can hammer back in, you should be good to go. Just use your screwdriver or a chisel or something like that. All right, and you can see I have that now hammered into where it belongs now. So we're ready to put the tire back on and put this car back in service. So there you have it guys, uh, we got that thing sealed up. We hasn't had any problems since. He's been able to use that car every day with his job and I'm very glad that it's, it's working out for him. Now, if you wanna really help me out for free, all you have to go do is go down and leave me a like. If this was uh, informative to you, uh, if you see anything that I did wrong or anything you'd like to comment on, please be sure to leave me a comment. It helps me with uh, YouTube's algorithm and it was always gonna be appreciated. With that being said, thank you very much and I'll catch you guys on the next video.